come out, which is nice. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. What you see here, um, currently being inspected by Keiko, um, is my, um, I think is a 2010 or 2011 uh, Rally Swift. This bike I found basically in a bin, or next to a bin. Um, it didn't have a seat post. Didn't have a seat, obviously. Didn't have a front wheel. Um, the derailleur was all broken. Um, and uh, the chain was jammed and rusty. I got, I got it home and um, a couple of weeks later, I bought some new parts for it. And, um, a re you know, and rebuilt it. So I'll put some pictures on screen uh, showing what it looked like when I uh, when I got it home and as I uh, rebuilt it. Um, got a new seat post and seat um, from uh, Decathlon, so the B-twin seats and uh, uh, aluminium seat post. Um, uh, B-twin six-speed um, derailleur, the original uh, Shimano um, derailleur uh, was uh, was very bent. Um, I tried to fix it, but it's it is a bit too bent. <laughs> but yeah, it's got six speeds. It's quite highly geared, so it's not ideal um, for living in a, a hilly area. But um, if you if you happen to live on on top of a hill and things you need are also on top of a hill, then it's quite adequate for those. <laughs> um, it is probably the heaviest bike that I own because it weighs in at I believe eighteen kilos. But if you yeah not in a hurry and live in a flattish area, it's probably in a a good. Um, a good uh, folding folding bike um, for for your needs. If you were to to come across one, um, well, let's do a uh, let's do a walk around of it. So starting at the front of the bike, um, I had to place the front wheel rim, the front tire. So that was, you know. I was 30 quid spent right away just replacing that. Um, the uh, the brake levers aren't original. Those were replaced because one was one was cracked on the bracket. So I took these off one of my other bikes and bought some nicer levers for that one. So you know, let's say five to ten pounds in replacement uh, replacement levers. Uh, the chrome is quite badly flaked in places. The uh, um, handlebars were like completely rusty, all the chrome had flaked off. It was really quite poor so I could have could have replaced them with some alloy ones, or I could have uh, sprayed them, like I've done with oil bikes, just spray it. Um, but I've just wrapped some electrical tape around these, and I've added my I love my bike bell, which I add to most of my bikes because one, they look nice, and I do love my bikes, and also. It makes a little sound. So, replacement seat went with a, uh, a very sit up and beg style seat. 
um, replacement seat post. And here we've got the uh, replacement uh, six-speed derailleur um, with a separate um, derailleur um, hanger because um, it doesn't, doesn't come integrated like the old style um, Shimano ones do. Um, the cables still need replacing, I think, on this. Um, It's all been stripped and serviced and everything, but I've not yet tidied up the um, chain set. Might do that in a uh, future video. On the pannier rack, uh, it was fairly well covered in rust, but I've cleaned it and I've put some corrust on it and that's where all these black markings are. I will at some point get some uh, silver spray paint and go over it just to make it look a bit nicer. So the question is, how does it ride? Riding on a nice shared path. It's a very upright position. Okay. Because of the height of the bottom bracket, um, and the belt was jingling. Because of the height of the bottom bracket, I have to have the seat up quite high. Uh, just on one of my heights, in order to get a decent. Uh, Decent leg stroke. Now this is a very bumpy path. This is tricky ground. So I've just made my way into Greenhill Village. So it's been a fairly flat ride getting here since we're pretty much at the top of one of the hills in Sheffield. So it's not been too taxing, but even on um, quite mild grad gradients, 
the uh, I've been using up most most of the gears because it is quite highly geared this bike. So yeah, so let's carry on. I'm going to test it out on some other hills. Really kind of push it. This village pump. So I've just been up quite a steep hill, maybe, mm, I have to check, but I think there's almost like 9% um, and I managed to go up here in bottom gear on this. an uphill sprint I wouldn't be able to keep doing that for a long Is there such a thing as a folding gravel bike? Folder cross! It's a new, new sport, just invented, folder cross. things I'm not so keen on on this bike is that latch mechanism because if it gets pressed in too far like if you accidentally kick it it comes off which isn't very safe on a folding bike so I much prefer the kind of latch with like a bolt, like what's on, used on the um, uh, on the stem, on the folding stem. I was just talking about how I'm not very keen on these kinds of latches um, because they don't seem as secure as. The, these kind of latches that you'd get on um, on other folding bikes for for the uh, mid joint, and because what I was finding was that if this got knocked in any way, it would come come loose. But and this is one of the downsides of picking up bikes out of the trash. Um, and not having a manual is that well, if you undo that on here there's a little adjuster a little te tension adjuster now all I did was wind this out a bit so it was wound in quite like that and you can see that it's quite insecure 
Yeah, so on here is this tensioner, and I unwound it, and then find, there we go, that's a nice big confident click there, and it's not going to come undone easily, so you put the safety on, and there we go. So I take back my complaints earlier in the video, and hopefully this will be a bit of useful information for anyone else having problems with these latches. Well, unfortunately it started raining now. Thank you for watching. Um, please do like and uh, subscribe if you've uh, enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more. And um, until next time, bye for now.